Hey everyone, Cynix here, and it's time for another episode of Paint Over Pals. Sadly, I don't have an extra pal for this video, but maybe you guys can all be my Paint Over Pals, and I actually strongly recommend anytime I'm gonna do a critique, or just anytime you're looking at art in general, try to think of what your critiques would be, because it's important as an artist to be able to give critiques and make observations. So maybe before I give my little critiques, you can pause the video, see what critiques you would give, and then see how it matches up with what I would say. But just as a reminder, I'm only going to go over a couple aspects of the art. I'm not going to try to fix everything. I'm just going to go over one key feature or two that I think will help the artist the most. All right, let's get into it. The first piece of art I have for you guys is by Dean, and he's going for this massive epic fantasy piece. And that's good. It's very ambitious, so I like that. I think the first thing that jumps out to me as a critique is just his overall coloring on the main creature there. It looks very even all throughout, so he's got a lot of good details in turning forms of all these muscles, but they all look the same from top to bottom. All the values are kind of in the same range, so we want to see if we can find the real dark areas find the light areas and make it seem like not everything has the same amount of lighting on it. We have the sun in the background, so we can just make that our main light source and really bring in everything on the front of the creature or character, whatever he is, uh, just bring that all into shadow and that will help it look a little more realistic. I'm also gonna add a couple more minor effects to this little magical explosion thing that's going on in the ground. Uh, we can make that expand out and use that to make some extra graphical elements as well. So these little fault lines and things, they just help draw the eye into that center. But aside from all of that, the main critique I have for this piece is that all of the action is really happening on one plane right in the midground. There's not really anything happening in the foreground, and there's not really anything to look at in the background, and the background's a bit too chaotic as well. There's a ton of shapes and dynamic things going on, but all of the shapes aren't really helping sell what's going on in the midground anyway. Uh, it's just a little bit too busy, and the shape dynamics aren't really lining up in an appearance way. So I think one thing I could do to fix it would just be obviously redraw the whole thing. I'm not going to do that. But just for instance, let's try to make it so there's a little more intimidation going on. So the camera angle you have now is just kind of weirdly observing it, but we don't feel like we're in any real danger, I guess, from the camera's point of view. So maybe we can make it so the camera is a little lower, so we're looking up a little more from the character's point of view and that will make it seem a little bit more intimidating. And to do that, I think we would also need to bring the characters more into the foreground. And as you can see, I also raised his arm up instead of having it kind of curled around just to extend his silhouette a little more, make him a little more intimidating before his arm was kind of curled back in on himself. And that's not as intimidating as having his arm up in the air. So just some minor compositional stuff like that, which can really all be sorted out in the early thumbnailing phase. But it's always important to think about what the camera position is going to tell the viewer about what they should feel and what emotions they should experience. So I think that's about it for this one. Let's move on. Next up, it looks like we have more line sketches by Brian. I believe he did some last time as well. And uh, it looks like he's been trying to take into the advice I said about making sure the line weight is on one side of the figure and not both sides of the figure and just kind of everywhere. But we can still work on the anatomy and little touches a little bit more. So one thing we will want to try to do is anytime we have something like a mouth or anything that has a definite form to it, we want to make sure the darkest parts are in the creases. So so anywhere where it's drawn into the form, such as the sides of the mouth, those are always the most indented parts. You always want to make sure those are showing more than anything. I'm going to try to do a video on nose anatomy soon, so I won't talk about that too much. But for the eyes, you can see if we were to imagine just how big the eyeballs would be in the way he drew it, they would be massive. So we always want to think about the size of the eyeballs, maybe before we actually draw the eyes. So something I like to do a lot of times is draw this simple little unconnected diamond shape, and that's just going to represent where the actual eyes are. And once I have that shape, I can just add some eyelids around it trying to keep a little bit of form as I do that and it should look a little bit more realistic. 
for this bottom left sketch, once again, just making sure if we're viewing something spherical, like an eyeball or a mouth or anything, from a certain angle, we should be seeing a line that follows the contour of that shape. So that's just simple stuff. But I think that's about all I'm gonna go over for this drawing. The next piece of art I have for you guys is by Jacob, and it's another Boku no Hero, Hero Academia piece. And uh, I think he did one a couple months ago. It was the other Boku no Hero, I don't know how to say the names, but it was another Hero Academia piece. And this one I think is looking a little better. It's got a little more depth, a little more dynamicism, a little more compositional stuff going in its favor. I like the effects a little bit more. The lightning effects are looking nice. There's a definite composition of a circular shape going on and he's kind of counter to that. So those are all good qualities that I like. Um, I will say his style doesn't quite fit mine. I feel like he's a little more hyper rendered than I like to be, uh, but I'll try to work within that. So the first thing I wanna think about changing is just a couple little tangent things, just right off the bat. Uh, the tangent of his thumb looked like it was going straight into his bicep. And when I just looked at it quickly, for some reason I couldn't separate it in my head. So I just wanted to make sure that was standing out on its own. So we just wanna do a quick fix on that. And there's a couple other little things as well, such as the rip in his jeans, pants. I don't know what they are, uh, but it just has this very flat triangular feeling. And in my brain, I'm thinking that his leg should be going forward. So I just wanna make sure that the rip in the pants is following the contour and perspective of the leg as it's coming forward. So just some minor changes to that. One other thing, and it's not a huge factor, but I like to bring this arm out a little bit that's kind of tucked away just because it looks like a little nub on his side. And when we see the silhouette, we want it to read like that's an arm or another fist. So once again, just thinking about the silhouette, if we look at the silhouette, if we bring his arm out maybe a little more, it breaks it and we can actually see it's an arm just from looking at that from the outline. And the other thing is more of a rendering style choice, but I personally like it a lot more when all of the values are kind of pooled together a bit more, a bit chunkier with all the brush strokes and everything. So in this shirt, instead of having all these thin little folds everywhere, maybe we can block some of them together and it'll look a little more appealing. I don't know, the same thing goes for the hair, to be honest. I'm not a fan of rendering every hair individually. I think uh, most of the good artists I see, they tend to clump them uh, just a little bit more. You can still show individual hairs when it comes to the edges and the breaks between different values, but just as a whole, I think it's a little weird to see every single hair. Um, so I feel like you're inspired a bit by Dave Raposa. At least that's the, that's the impression I get. It feels very Dave Raposa-esque uh, with this hyper-rendered style. So maybe you can check out how he does hair because he still blocks hair together. I know it feels like you're seeing a lot of individual hairs, uh, but I can tell from looking at his work, he definitely definitely blocks it together and just focuses on the edges in order to show individual hairs. So that's the main thing and it's really difficult to do a paint over when something's already highly rendered because obviously any quick little paint over I do will not have the same rendered quality as everything else so it's hard to make the paint over changes look any good but I'll do my best to just make it give you at least a second take on things. So I think that's gonna do it for this piece, but overall, I do wanna say, Jacob, it is quite nice, so good job. Up next, I have this painting by Joey, and it's kind of a weird little robot guy looking at a don't walk sign. I'm not sure what it's supposed to mean, but it seems pretty deep or something. Um, the first thing that stands out to me personally is just this weird hair texture in the foreground. I'm not really sure what it is. Maybe it's supposed to be a monster in the foreground. I don't know, but it just really stands out as looking super photo-y and maybe it's like a brush that's been blurred. But the, the consistency of styles is something that's very important anytime you're doing digital painting. You can't have something that looks a little too photo-y next to something that looks very hand-drawn it always looks a bit off-putting. So just watch out for that. I'm not sure how I feel about that. There's also just a ton of texture and grain on everything, but I'll try to work with what you got. So the first thing that stands out to me as something that could be changed is this strong secondary little lighting you have on the back of things. And normally secondary lighting can be a great thing, but in this case, I feel like it's really taking away from the focal points because it's creating way too much contrast. So I'm just gonna knock all of these secondary lights that are on the left side of things out. So on the back of our little robot guy, just taking those out makes him feel 
much more believable and makes the piece read much better. And also on this don't walk sign, I don't know why there's such a strong little bounce light thing right on the rim of it. So there doesn't seem to be a need for that. So we'll just take that out as well. And it's already looking a bit better. So we can just mess with a couple little things, a little contour cut line on his hip leg area, as well as just some additional shadowing. So just a couple minor changes and you can see how not going overboard with secondary lightings. I know secondary lightings and bounce lights are always extremely fun, but just remember you always got to serve the greater good of whatever the art piece you're doing is. All right, up next I have this beginnings of a digital painting, digital sketch thing by Valentine. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, but this appears to be Lobo from the DC universe. And I think you're off to a good start. One of the things I really like is that you're using a bigger brush. A lot of the brush strokes are pretty sizable. You're not used to using tiny little strokes everywhere. So that's good. You can probably even go bigger. But one recommendation I would have would be to never do a grayscale drawing against a white background. Always come in with a nice mid-tone gray for starting out. It'll just make all your values a lot better. So I'm just gonna wipe in a quick gray background and you can see that already helps us see what values we should be using for the, our face and our neck and everything a little bit better. And now I can come back in. Maybe we want the face a little brighter so I can knock it back a little bit into the brighter range. Maybe we want the neck and everything to stay a little darker. Uh, but it just gives us a much more strong sense of control over our values when we're working against a mid-tone instead of this bright white that's very distracting on our brain. So I'm just gonna mess around with his eyes and everything, but one main point I want to make is that it's really important to try to avoid any sense of dark lines, especially like around that neck area where we just see those super dark lines. If we can make them feel like they have that form that those lines represent without actually having any dark lines, it'll work a lot better overall. Remember that skin tones in general are very low contrast. There's not a lot of high speculars and dark areas. It's all kind of in the middle range. And if we do it like that, it should look a lot more realistic in the end. I'm messing with things like the nose and everything where there were a lot of dark lines, trying to lessen those dark lines. The less lines we see, the better. We only wanna save the dark areas for where it's really gonna matter and really gonna pop the form. So maybe under the nose, we can bring it in a little bit, but we don't want it on the top side of the nose or anywhere where it might be catching any sort of light whatsoever. But it's a good start to a painting, and I would be curious to see where you would take it if you had to keep rendering it out. So thank you, Valentine, for sharing this one. Let's move on to our very last art piece. Here we have another painting by Jory, who has, I think, been in every episode of Paint Over Pals, maybe? I don't know. He's definitely been in a lot of them. Anyway, Jory has these very weird looking paintings that are always quite good. I think on this one, it's hard to say exactly what he's going for. I'm not inside his mind, but he's always going for this weird Victorian, almost Sargent-esque look with this kind of creepy monstery elements. I really like his hue variation, especially on the skin tones. And there's just a lot of interesting details overall. So I'm not gonna go overboard with my crit, but I will offer a few opinions. So for instance, that flower on the left side on top of her head felt really under rendered compared to the rest. So we can just punch that up with a little bit of contrast and it should match the other flowers going on up there. The other thing that I really wanna change is more of a, I don't know, fashion-y type thing or, or a silhouette thing. I don't know what you can call it, but it, it doesn't really have to apply because obviously this is not quite humanoid, but I just really felt like her whole dress area should be brought up a lot higher to make it really fit an appealing silhouette. It just kind of branched out in such a weird way that I thought it would look better if I just raised up that, that hemline way up high. Um, so it was just a little bit more symmetrical. It felt like it was branching out at the right parts, um, just felt a little bit more feminine or something. I don't know. Uh, but I just thought messing with that silhouette would help a little bit. 
But the last thing I'll mention is that it feels like it's blending a bit too much into the background. It also kind of all is washed over by the same slightly muddied tone. Um, so we're gonna try to mess with that just a little bit. I think since she has such high contrast and high chroma near the top and such dark values near the bottom, we could bring her face out a lot more if we were to say darken the top of the background a little bit. And um, I would try bringing out the the bottom but then again do we really want to look at the bottom of the dress no we want to keep our focus on the top so we can keep the darkness near the bottom bring in some darkness from the top and just have a little bit of lights kind of filtering through in the middle area instead of just getting brighter and brighter and brighter as we go up this should make her stand out a little bit more from the background but then again it depends on if your goal is to make her stand out or not so after i've done that i'll do a little bit of color adjusting just to bring in some slightly cooler tones on her dress and everything and hopefully that makes her pop even more from the background which is very warm and kind of muddy like I mentioned. So that's going to about do it for my paint overs this month. I hope you enjoyed watching this and I'd be curious to see what critiques you guys had for all these pieces. Did they line up with the critiques I gave? Did you have completely different critiques? You can let me know in the comments below. And I would of course like to thank all of the wonderful artists who were featured in this video. And as always, a big thank you to everyone who watched this and an even bigger thank you to all of my Patreon supporters who all of these paint over people are a part of. That was a bit of a tongue twister, but thank you so much to everyone and I will see you all again shortly.